Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, I'll be taking you through the prep work and also the paint work on this Chrysler Jeep CRD four-wheel drive. So it's painted in deep cherry red crystal metallic, that's the color name, and the color code is JRP. So I decided for this video I'd do prep work and masking and paint work all in the one video. So I've sped most of it up to double speed and I'll take you through the steps. So first up I was getting the double sided tape or the glue off from behind the uh, where the body moulds were because we pulled them body moulds off. And next up I'll start buzzing down this, uh, this fender, sounding down the fender and then giving it a quick scotch bright around the edges. I was using 400 grit there and next up I just decided to use a bit of 1k primer over this uh, fender this time. So we just spray just a quick coat over that and then while that's drying, it won't take too long to dry, about 10-15 minutes, I'll start sanding the rest of the car down. Which is just, we're doing a bumper bar and a blend on this driver's side front door. So what I'm using here is a 600 grit after giving the panel a really good clean down just with a bit of water and a damp cloth and then drying it off. So then I've got some grey scotch bright and going over all the shiny areas with the grey scotch bright because if you paint over shiny paint well the, the new paint's not going to stick. So uh, After that's done I've then grabbed a piece of 800 on the softback sanding sponge and I'm going over and taking that 600 grit, which is a touch too coarse to paint over. You can do it, but sometimes you'll see the scratches, and then I'm going over that with the 800, so it's nicer to, to clear over and to put your base coat over than 600. So. Keeping it clean at all times, using the air duster gun in between each stage, so you do one, one step and then you blow it off, and then do another step and then blow it off. So. This is just a quick look at the colour. It turned out that I did do one slight adjustment to it. It was a touch dark and then I just put a touch more of the pearl in it. Uh, this colour is pretty much full of red pearl. It's actually a pretty nice colour I think. So, um, yeah, Just a quick look at the colour. And then now that's dried down that fender and um, I've just grabbed a bit of 500 the soft back sanding sponge and just given it a quick scuff over. Just a, basically just a day nib to get rid of any uh, lumps dust that may have landed in it so uh all up i think this uh it was about 50 minute uh of footage and i cut it down to 14 minutes by editing parts out and um speeding it up at certain parts as well so but you still get a look at each step so <coughs> yeah this is a masking once in the booth we're just going around doing all the edge masking first we'll then be able to shut the door and we'll pull some plastic over the whole car and then razor blade it out. Um, you can alternately do it the old fashioned way which we, I used to do it was paper it up first and then you put your plastic over after and um, tuck the plastic into the paper but uh, these days the, um, the plastic has a coating on it which the old plastic never used to so if you used to paint over the old plastic it would actually start flaking off halfway through painting and added landing back into your fresh paintwork so you never used to be able to do this but so once that's all masked up we'll get the prep sole rags or the, the static anti um, rags and then wipe some silicon remover over the whole panel and then you get another clean one and wipe off it's pretty important that you keep wiping until it's uh, completely dry because uh, if you don't you can be left with a slight film in between the, the panel and your fresh paint and it can actually lead to delamination and stuff like that so, so I usually go over them a couple of times when I'm using this and next up we're starting to tack rag it that yellow rag is what we call a tack rag it's, pretty, it's, a, it's got a bit of stick to it You've got blue ones and you've also got uh, yellow ones. The yellow ones are a high attack. I prefer the yellow ones personally because they've got more stick to them and they're more likely to pick up uh, more bits of dust. Whereas the blue ones are more designed for base coat, so they're a low attack. And here we go, start off with our first 
coat of colour. So what I'm putting on here is actually just a ground coat. It's because reds don't really cover very well. So um, I ended up mixing up, it was about 200, 220 mils of colour, uh, of the top coat colour. And then I ended up finding some red that was sitting on the bench, just a couple of hundred, just a hundred or so mils. I was sitting on the, on the bench for the last job that I did that was red base coat and um, I'm just putting that down first to, to aid us with the coverage so I'm not going to use too much of the top coat. Just putting it on nice and wet just to get the coverage because reds are pretty well known not to cover up very well. Any little spot through where you've uh, cut through with your sanding. Put a, but that's what I was doing with that sense the whole lot. And I'm just blending up that pillar for the colour too. So this is a top coat colour I'm putting on now. I went out for five minutes actually. I remember having to make in between coats on this one. Went out and had something to eat and then came back in. By that time it's dried down. We're only painting this bumper bar for the sake of the colour as well, just for the sake of the blend. So. Yeah, and the real damage on it was the fender, which we ended up putting a brand new fender replacement on. So starting to do the blend now. So this is this colour is pretty dark. It's a dark enough colour that I decided I didn't need any uh, blend, blending clear on it. I'm just blending it out naturally straight over the dry dry panel, and it's blended out nice enough. So any dark colours you don't need the blending clear, which you've probably seen me in some of my other vids. If you, uh, if you watch my other vids on the light and metallic, so you use a blending clear or I do a blend, but it's not necessary on a colour like this. So for base coat, I'm using the Devilbus GTI Pro with the HVLP air cup. The job sounds pretty pretty efficient and it gets a lot of uh, material on the panel and not too much um, wastage, not too much overspray. Most of the paint hits the panel, so it gets it on nice. So, um, settings I'm using for base coat is pretty standard, have the fluid wound right out, um, so, just, so it's hanging in by a couple of threads, and then open up the fan right up, and um, pressure settings to about one and a half bar is about 25 psi. <coughs> and this is our blend coat, our final blend coat over the door, blend over that um, bumper bar as well. So you notice this uh, final coat of base coat is a bit uh, a bit drier than the other coat, so we get the correct uh, metallic standing up. And now we go on with our clear coat. So this is actually my pretty pretty new gun. This one that I'm using here, and um, yeah, there's a little bit of clear because uh, I because I've heated the clear up. I mixed the clear up to start off with. And then um, put it in the booth, a little bit of clear, dribbled up the top there, but that's no big deal. So, yeah, my new gun, I'm still uh, actually uh, experimenting with it, but I've got the HV20, sorry, the TE20 air cap on it at the moment, is the one that I'm using. The clear, I used the TE10 on the job as well, but um, yeah, TE20 is pretty good, I found. And you can actually go pretty low with the pressure. You can you can go right down to um, 20 psi and still get quite good results. So um, if you were to do that with the um, standard GTI Pro and the uh, T2 air cap, you'd probably start getting it quite fairly. But um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, how this, is, this gun's going so far, and I'm enjoying that little bit uh, less weight in the hand as well. Uh, I, I never originally thought. Uh, it doesn't, wouldn't really matter, I think it's about 160, 180 grams difference in the, in the light to the, the standard pro, and um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. So, the pressure in this spray burst jumps up and goes down, and this is, uh, it's an old, old school compressor, and uh, it's, it's a great, good compressor, it does the job, but when there's um, so many people outside working, it'll um, go up and then come back down. So I've got a, that's, if you ever see me adjusting my pressure, that's the reason why. And if you're doing some uh, home jobs as well, the same thing is most likely going to happen. If you're doing, if you've just got a little small compressor then, and you want to paint uh, a whole side on the car, you'll probably be 
finding you get two panels done and then you'll have to wait for a minute, wait for the compressor to build back up. Like this isn't that bad, but still you can still constantly paint, but you get slight fluctuation. So we gave um, in between coats a good five minutes in between coats. If you don't wait in between coats long enough, well you can end up getting um, paint runs, uh, solvent foil, and many different problems. So, uh, yeah, temperature is gonna obviously um, determine how long you have to wait in between coats, and also uh, amb ambient temperature and yeah, the hardeners and the reducer and the clear and the products that you're using are also going to play a factor in your drying times. So I uploaded a, a different video than what I usually do this morning, it was my 100th upload and I decided to do something different and it's a video, I'm just doing two separate test panels um, and it's how to spray a, a panel at home by yourself, I'll show you exactly all the tools and materials required to do uh, a DIY project with a spray gun and a also a different panel with a aerosol can so um, that's a good video to check out if you haven't already seen it check it out um, yeah it's, it's a good one for the DIYs and people that don't really know much at all about spray painting some of the stuff that I talk about here might just um, go over the top of your head but I, I try to simplify it as much as I can and um, yeah Hopefully you um, enjoy the videos. Um, I'm only quite new to this. I I made one video in 2011, and that was just a guy, my friend, in the corner of the spray booth, and he was just videoing me when I was putting some clear coat on and base coat, and I uploaded that in 2011, and have been wanting to make more for a long time, but just recently decided to uh, get back into it and. Um, February uh, 2014 this year was my first upload as a gunman and um, now I'm up to 100 and it's uh, the 30th of 29th of June so I've, I've been pretty busy putting up videos, countless hours in editing and um, yeah I've spent a bit of money on the cameras and yeah so I, I'm enjoying it, it's, I'm getting some good feedback, Lots of pe I've yet to have any negativity about the, the work I've done and the videos I'm making, so thanks a lot to the subscribers for, for all your positive input and your good comments and that, so um, yeah, that's, uh, that's our second coat of clear. Um, at the end, we've got a, um, a clip of the car once it's finished off and it's been polished and everything's finished off on it, so... What I'm doing here is I'm uh, doing some blending clear. Um, that's that's uh, blending juicer, sorry. Um, and that just allows it so that we can buff over that and you won't see the two separately painted areas. And um, yeah, there's a quick look at the car once it's all finished. A couple of links at the end of this video to a couple of my other vids. Um, check them out if you haven't already. A couple of my popular vids are NSI Water and the Pro Light.